Welcome back to another episode of The Goat Debate. My name is Abaya Israel. The show is brought to you by Goat Debate Media, and I'm here with the two coaches, Coach Scott and Coach J.O., and we got a doozy for you tonight. All right, the topics we're going through are these. Do the players of today's NBA, the superstars, do they consider LeBron James a top five NBA player of all time? Michael Jordan states that he sees himself inside of Anthony Edwards. And we also want to ask the question, does LeBron James deserve three trophies and more? Right after this. Even though I killed the ghost, it's still room to debate. It's either Jordan or LeBron who being labeled the great. If you hungry for the smoke, then come and get you a plate. Cause I'm rock with LBJ and some giving them hate. Hang on, tune into the show, cause we about to get into it. But now it's time to prove it. All right, we back. We got a good show for you. We're going to jump right into this. An interesting topic. As of late, we've been having certain superstars coming out with their top five list. And we've been seeing that LeBron James has, he's not been making the cut for top five players of all time. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bias or what, but Coach Scott, why do you think that players nowadays, they're starting to say, well, maybe LeBron James, maybe he's a top five player of all time. Maybe he's not. Wouldn't you think it'd be more players saying he is, seeing, that, seeing as though they're closer to his era or in his era versus Michael Jordan, somebody they may have grew up watching? What do you think? I think that you 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 cannot have watched basketball, played basketball over the past 12 years and not have LeBron James as your number one or your number two player of all time. You have to be absolutely on drugs. You have to do not have a TV you or 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 just be a straight hater. I'm just 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 calling it like it is. Over the past 12 years in NBA history, you you cannot look over what this man has accomplished over the past 12 years. Look, I really was sitting here trying to try, trying to just just amass the information and trying trying to formulate really what this guy's put together over the past. 12 years. And if you've come into the league over the past 12 years, anytime from 2012, 2013 season, here's just some of this man's body of work over the second half of his career, over the second half of his career. In 2013, he averaged 26.8 points per game, eight rebounds, seven assists, two blocks, one steal. He has an NBA championship, an MVP final championship, an MVP league. This is his fourth MVP of the league. But if you came in the league during this time, this would have been his first for you. But he had a league MVP. He was an NBA all-star, first team, all NBA, first team, all defense. And he played on a Miami Heat team that had 66 wins. In 2014, he had 27, seven and six with two steals per game. He was all NBA, all NBA, all, all-star. He was an all defensive second team. He had 60, he had a 61 point performance. He was the, he had a finals appearance where he averaged 28, eight and two steals in the loss to the Spurs. And just fast forwarding to the 2020 season, he had 25, 8 and 10, one steal, one block, an NBA championship again, a finals MVP, all-star selection, all-star first team, became the first, uh, became the assist leader in the NBA. He was the finals for the finals. He had 30, 12 and 9. I mean, what do you want out of a player that is not considered your top five for Anyone, anyone that has played against or played with or that came into the league over the past 12 years. How dare Mm. you say this man does not earn the right to be in your top five? That's crazy. Let me let me ask you this, um, coach. Let me ask you you this, Coach Scott. Do you think likability plays a part? Say that again. Do you think the fact that people like or dislike uh, LeBron will play a part if, if he's in their top five or not? I think likability definitely plays a part in that, but this man is a world icon. He's a world icon. He's 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 definitely similar to when Kobe was was living. He's definitely similar to when Michael was was playing. Michael is still a world icon because he's still living, but this man is an international icon. So from an international standpoint and from a world standpoint, yes, my uh, uh, LeBron James is definitely the one of the most recognizable uh, individuals on the planet. Mm. But at the same time, 
his body of work. This is what we need to be judging his body of work. That's not, true. Not do I like him or did he put me out of the playoffs or well, did he or did he or did he win a championship against me? That, that that's true. That's true. I, but yeah, of course, that's what people do. They they see if they like somebody or not. Just even in presidential elections, we see that, right? Ah, I don't like him voting for the other guy. So I'm I'm not saying if it's right or wrong. What I'm saying is maybe it plays a part. Coach Jo, do you think that uh, players like Steph Curry, like if I had to ask you right now before you go into your, in your response, who was the most player dominant player of this era? There are some people that are going to say Steph Curry, right? That that's 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 out there. Some people will say Steph Curry. And if that's the case, if he's not dominating the era which he play in, could that be a part of or the reason why people are not having listing him in their top five? What are your thoughts? That's exactly the reason why. Let's think about this. Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard. Those are some players who on LeBron's watch at the highest level of the sport went up against them, and beat them. All of these players are younger than LeBron. Tell me, I should call you Professor Scott with all those numbers you had. Coach Scott, (laughs) tell me, tell me when on Michael Jordan's watch or Kobe Bryant's watch where players younger than him, younger, dominated him repeatedly in his prime. You can't do that. You can't show me that. Okay, listen, listen, Stephen Curry, Stephen Curry literally is the best player of this era. You went back to 2012. Hold on. You went back to 2012. I can go to 2015. I can go to 2015. That's two MVPs to LeBron's none. 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 Four championships. How many championships have LeBron had since 2015? He had a finals MVP. He got he hey, outplayed hey, their listen, whole team in the listen, NBA finals. Slow down. You went from 2012. I, I, I topped you. I trumped you and went to 2015. This is a nine-year stretch. Stephen Curry has four championships in nine years. You cannot understand that. These players are younger than LeBron. So when they are looking at LeBron, they're looking at him. If he's the number one or two, what does that say about me? Why is it a sin or a transgression not to have LeBron James in your top two or even top five? It's not. Can Do you I, know how I many answer? great players have played the game of basketball, but LeBron James automatically has to be in the top two or has to be in the top five? Why? Can I answer that question? You try. No, but you, you gave me a trigonometry why, lesson. Why is it a you gave me a trigonometry lesson just full of numbers. They lying. I, I, I thought this was a history class. We need to, hey, we need to go to history, not trigonometry. You I don't, need, I don't need to hear a bunch need of numbers to find out what LeBron James is doing. You don't, you, you don't need trigonometry. I don't it's need a bunch of numbers. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't need a bunch of numbers. I need to know what happened in history. Okay, when Stephen Curry is on the court with you and went up against you. Okay, went up against you. That's three times he won. Three on your watch. But did he lose? Has he He lost lost one? He lost one. Okay, he lost one. Did he get outplayed head to head? Listen, no, 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 he did not. No, he did not. No, he did not. Does winning factor in a head to head matchup and who plays the best? I don't want to hear nothing about numbers. If those numbers didn't directly uh, contribute to winning, I don't want to hear about them. It don't mean anything. You was right? getting blown out. You was getting you was getting wiped out the court. The games weren't close. That's the thing. Kawhi Leonard, a puppy, a puppy, won it finals MVP on your watch. The guy was a puppy. Do you not understand that, Selwyn? So, so here's the thing. You have as of recent Shea Gilders Alexander and Anthony Edwards. Two of the younger superstars in the league or or growing to be the superstars, if you don't consider them that already. When asked about their top five, LeBron James was not there. An older superstar that's in the league. Uh, Stephen Curry, when asked about his top five, LeBron James is not there. Why are players, Coach Scott, you, you, you gave... 
as Coach J.O. said, a trigonometry lesson. <laughs> but you gave a lot of numbers. Steph Curry or Stephen Jackson? Uh, Steph Curry. You gave, uh, you gave I think, an excellent reason why, because you ran out of numbers. You gave an excellent reason why LeBron should be in somebody's top five. I don't know. Now, I don't think LeBron's a go. That's not a secret. But would I leave him out the top five? Um, it might be debate. <laughs> right? It just kind of depends. But what I'm trying to get to is why are players today who play with LeBron not looking at LeBron saying he's not a top five player? Like they play crazy. with LeBron. They crazy as hell. They, 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 all, they, all of them? There's there's no there's it's not all of them. That that's what it's not all of them. No, it's no, no. Not I mean all of them. I mean, no, no, not all the players, but all the players who left them off the top five. All the players that left them off the top five, LeBron James himself has probably beat them in a finals, in, in a finals. He's beat them in a finals. A fact. Well, not Anthony Edwards or, or SGA. Well, again, those, those, those puppies, that, those, those, those kids, to me, Anthony Edwards, when we get to that segment, we, we're going to deep dive into that. But I, I, think it's more, I think it's more of a ploy than anything, in my opinion. Okay, so you think it's it's a setup? Because my my coach Jo like my thing is I didn't say they setup, are I younger players play, for sure. Well, I don't know tomato tomato. <laughs> I'm looking at it. My, what I'm saying is this: um, they are younger players, Coach Jo, and you would think that they would look up to a LeBron James, or you know, I can understand Kobe, you know Bryant because they're all kind of in that transition, but. You would think LeBron James would be right there. You know what I mean? Um, he's not. He's, he's, he's not there. I'm, I'm confused by this because from what the narrative is, the, the, the thought process of the younger generation is changing from Jordan to LeBron. But I'm kind of saying that's not with everybody. Maybe some, but not all. You know? Most what do you- no, it's not all. It, it's some. It's, it's a few, right, who, who do love LeBron. Don't get me wrong. Those young players... I, I feel like they admire LeBron more so as the man than the basketball player. You know what I'm saying? When they went on the court, you got to think about it. They play, they, they're on the court with him. They don't fear him on the court as people feared Kobe Bryant or uh, Michael Jordan. There was literally people who came out and said, I was afraid to be on the court. I, I'm fearful of Michael Jordan. Like they said Shaq, it. Shaq Diesel Shaq. said that. Shaq Diesel you know what I'm said saying? that. Like, and, 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 and he did. And I think that that's, that's cowardice. Like, it's not. No, how's it's that, it's, very, how's it's, that very, it's very cowardice. It's very cowardice. It's no. very cowardice. How? It's very, it's very cowardice. Did it stop them from playing? They it's just said they was afraid. It is not. They played very the game. Cowardice. Very cowardice. No, no, well, let me let me hear let me As hear uh, coach 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 go Scott. Ahead. Go ahead and tell us really quickly um, before we move to the next segment. Why is it cowardice if they say they fear Michael Jordan? Here, here's the difference. Here's the difference as as we look at it. A fear is a, is something of the unknown. We knew Michael Jordan was 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 a great basketball player. We knew Michael Jordan what he could do. We knew what he could do. What were you afraid of? But players physically revere. You revere a LeBron James, meaning you have a you have a fear of him because reverence is a form of fear, but it's more of a in awe of the guy as opposed to I'm in fr- you're you're more in 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 awestruck of Michael Jordan the player as opposed to going okay, out and physically but, just playing against him. But I, Still, I mean, I don't know if I got the answer. The cowardice part. Like, for example, Shaq Diesel said, I was terrified when I stepped on the court with Michael Jordan. And the reason he was terrified. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The reason he said I was terrified was because he know he knew that Michael Jordan posterized players. And I did not want to get posterized. I was scared that he might catch me, and he did. He definitely did. And he dunked on him. And also um like with coach jo when you came over on uh to my podcast uh friday night accolades we were talking about this with kobe bryant it's like with lebron james the shot clock's running out or the the clock game clock's running out yeah you got to respect him because he's shooting he's shooting better actually this year you got to respect him to make sure you know you don't want him to make that shot and uh because you know he can definitely make the shot right 
but with a Michael Jordan and a Kobe Bryant, it's like, oh my God, don't even let them touch the ball because we know how this is going to end up. And that's, that's, I think, the difference in how players are saying, I don't think it's a cowardice. I think it's a, just a different level of understanding a player sets. But with that being said, we got to go to the next segment. All right. Michael Jordan. Speaking of Jordan, Coach A.O., Jordan said he can see himself. I can kind of see myself in Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards is turned into like the Dominique Wilkins human highlight reel. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not, I'm not too fond of this little, little guy. And the reason I'm not too fond of him is because he's a rude individual. He's very rude. You know, do you know how rude it is to be dunking on people like that? Like he's ju- his head, his, his shoulders above the rim. God, like you ain't got no manners. <laughs> you ain't got, uh, obviously, I'm, I'm joking, but this, this, he is another. The only human highlight reel before Vince Carter was Dominique Wilkins that I knew of that I could call that. Then Vince Carter. And now it's like a little bit of Michael Jordan ish and Vince Carter together with Dominique in there inside of Anthony Edwards. Am I off by this? Or what what, what do you think about Michael Jordan's statement about seeing that he can see himself inside of Anthony Edwards? Yeah, you're definitely off. You you're definitely off. And um Chris Boussard is the one who uh reported this and say he Ask Michael Jordan, do he see some Anthony Edwards inside of him? I want to hear it. I want to hear that from Michael Jordan because I'm not buying it. I'm sorry. Like I buy, I buy it. I buy. It. I buy I'm not for, buying. I buy for. It. I get. I Where get. Where are I the similarities? What? They're dark skinned and can and, and athletic. They're dark skinned and can jump. Like what? What? What's the similarities? Okay. Do yeah, we not understand? That's, that's definitely a similarity. Is it not? <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Listen. Take a page off my book. Listen. This is my. I mean, uh, this is Anthony Edwards' fourth year in the NBA. Do we know what MJ was by year four? Bobby Knight, before Michael Jordan touched the NBA court, said that's the greatest player he ever seen. Is that Anthony Edwards? Do we not understand? Oh, Boy, I think it's a little unfair. I think I think that approach would yes, be a little unfair. You said it right. It's unfair. You said no, it. It's no. unfair. What I mean is this. I don't think they were saying that Anthony Edwards is on the same level as Michael Jordan. I think that's the way you're taking it. Like, he's there with Michael Jordan. I don't think nobody thinks that. I think it's simply stated that I can see a little bit of myself in him. Like, maybe his work ethic. Maybe the way he's jumping. Or maybe what he's dunking. The, 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 how hard he plays the game. It's not saying by his fourth year he's going to be equivalent to Michael Jordan. I don't think anybody thinks that. But he, he, the trajectory he's on isn't even like a a Tracy McGrady trajectory. Like, it's not there. You understand? Like, we... We are doing Anthony Edwards a disservice by doing this. Like, Michael Jordan was a MVP and defensive player of the year. By year three, year four, he averaged 37 points per game in year three. I agree. Like, it's not. Let me get like Coach Scott and, and take you out of my trigonometry class, right? Oh, Ant-Man, up until year four, I mean, up until this day, has played 272 games. By year four, Michael Jordan, 264 games. Okay? So that's Anthony Edwards has played six more games than Michael Jordan up to this point in their careers. Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. 8,630 points. Anthony Edwards, 6,646 points. Okay? Michael Jordan has... Almost 2,000 more points than Anthony Edwards at this point in their careers. And Anthony Edwards has played more games. It's not close. (laughs) Anthony Edwards has made two All-Star games. It's just not there. I'm sorry. I don't see it. They don't play alike. They they don't have the same footwork. They don't have the same um, shooting ability. They don't have the same passing ability. It's not the same. I don't see it. Here's what I think y'all keep doing it. I think you I think you're both missing the point because I feel like Coach Coffin to come up with the same rhetoric. I don't think they were comparing the game. They're not comparing, hey, is he equivalent to Michael Jordan? That wasn't the that wasn't the point of the statement. I can say I see myself in my son. That doesn't mean he's equivalent to me at that point. Or, you know, I just see some similarities. 
That, that's what are that's those, all though? it is. But what are those similarities? Well, that's, that, that's, they, they, that's for that will be for him to define. But if he say, yeah, I can see some of myself in him. That does not mean if I score five thousand by year two, you got to score five thousand by year two or better. That's not that's comparing careers. That's comparing uh, uh, athletic. They're not even comparing athletic abilities. He's just saying it could be it could be something as simple as work ethic. I see the way he works on the court. I see the heart he plays with. That could be something as simple as that, but not comparing careers, Coach Scott. Coach Scott, what do you think about the, the statement that was stated that Michael Jordan said he could see himself, some of himself, inside of Anthony Edwards? I think it was a bad statement. I think Michael Jordan himself, if he, if Michael Jordan did say that, it's only one reason why Michael Jordan would say that, and it's because he has a disdain for LeBron James. Oh, he my God. A, he has a disdain <laughs> for LeBron James. I think I, 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 think I can coach, buy that one, Coach. <laughs> I think I think Coach J O. I think Coach oh, J O. And in in, in in the things that he said, hey man, you know, I don't agree with him often, but I have no arguments to this set of men. He took a page out of my book, and I didn't share it with him. I'm talking about the only thing those two share is the <laughs> fact that they can jump and they have the same melanin. I'm talking about that's about it. That is it. So wait, but wait, I got a question for you then. What if the part that he's seen within himself was the jumping ability? If that if that's the case, but, say it. But 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 you disrespect you disrespect all the other players that came that had crazy jumping ability that you never gave those type of props to. Why do it now with Anthony right. Edwards? Was were, were, had, were, you, how do you, you know? Had but LeBron was he James, asked that you though? Had Tracy McGrady, you had other LeBron players James. that that jump like this, right? That that but that did they ask Michael Jordan? Like did they ask Michael Jordan about that? Because I know they asked Michael Jordan about Kobe. There was a response. They asked Michael Jordan about Anthony Edwards, and there was a response. Did they ask him about Tracy McGrady? Now you just said out of your own mouth, and you over there, Coach J.O., you just agreed. You both just said something. Y'all both tripping tonight. You both just said something, right? You both just said jumping abilities. You probably agree with that. Okay, but well, let's go with jumping ability. Now we're going to switch it to, well, why he ain't said with other players? I don't know. Don't care. The point is, if he did say it, <laughs> if he did say it, and if that, even if that's what he saw, then I can see what he's talking about. If he said about a T-Mac, hold on. If he said about T-Mac, I can see what he's talking about. I think what y'all are doing is trying to compare careers or compare is he equivalent or equal to Michael Jordan. And I don't think that was that's what the whole conversation was about. But go ahead, Coach Dale. But that that's 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 exactly what the conversation is about. You know why? I can understand if Michael Jordan brought this up himself and he's the one that, that come out and said he's being asked these things because there's a narrative that's being pushed now. Is Anthony Elwes the next Michael Jordan? Because the people are saying they play alike. That's the narrative that they play alike. They look the same. Is he becoming the next Michael Jordan of the league? Now, I mm. like Anthony Edwards. I really do. I like his attitude. I like his approach to the game, right? During All-Star Weekend, he was asked about uh, why players don't play in the, the competitive nature on the NBA. He was like, and he would ask, what can he do to fix? He was like, players need to play. Players need to play. If you're healthy, people are paying their money, uh, play. That's the type of attitude you do want the face of the NBA to have. Sure enough. But we do not have to put MJ next to him or compare him in any way, shape, form, or fashion to give him credit or to prop him up as the next face of the league. He can but do, do you that think, on his own plate. Do you think that type of mentality what is what MJ could have been referring to looking at today's league? Because I remember a conversation that Magic Johnson said he had with Michael Jordan at his um, 60th birthday party about how players just do not like to play. In today's NBA, Scott, Coach Scott, they don't like to play. And since Anthony Edwards is coming out, hey, listen, you need to play. I don't care if it's an all-star game because we've seen the Kobe. We've seen Jordan. Even in the all-star game, they were competitive. And if he's talking about being competitive like that, then why can't it just be simply, I see some of myself in him as far as the mentality of the way he's thinking. It's not necessarily career-based or athletically-based or at a stats it's just I can see some of myself in him, and I think everybody rushed to say, "Oh, look at the points he scored, and look at the points Jordan scored." That's I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. I think I, I think that's fair. I think it's fair. Absolutely, I think that that is, I think that's truly fair. I also feel like 
like LeBron James makes a lot of bad statements. I think Mike <laughs> made a bad statement. I think he made a bad statement. I don't can think we he have made, one, I, you, Can we have you, one I, conversation I, I without LeBron with a, James? I, think with a, I, I don't think it was a bad <laughs> statement. I think it was a bad statement with no clarity. And yep. that's what made it a bad I would, statement. I would, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. The clarification should be there. But let's go to the next segment. Speaking of, of LeBron James. Coach J.O., does LeBron James deserve three statutes? The Lakers, the Heat, the Cavs. Would you say he should get three? Because I'm kind of wavering on this, Coach Guy. I, I, maybe I, I would probably say two. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that Lakers statue, though. I, I don't know about that one just yet. Coach J.O., what are your thoughts? No, he doesn't deserve three. He doesn't at all, right? Let's Let's make this clear, right? LeBron James is a cash cow. Let's put this down. Like, he's a cash cow, right? So, not even on the court, right? Because I don't think that LeBron James on the court to what people uh, get statues for, for winning multiple championships, that type of thing. I don't think he did that with Cleveland, right? But what he did for the city of Cleveland is something astronomical. The economic... Uh, impact that he had on that community is probably something we've never seen. Yeah. Okay. It, 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 it's been reported, right, that LeBron James had a, a $200 million impact per year on the city of Cleveland. The restaurants, the bars uh, that was next to the, uh, to the, to the Cavs arena, 13% uh, increase yearly while LeBron James is there. So the economic impact that he had is just amazing. So that alone deserves a statue, not necessarily for what he did on the court, but just being in Cleveland and being LeBron James. But, but you don't think what my- he did on the court should be deserving of a statue? Now, I would say in Cleveland, him bringing that championship, what was like a 52-year drought or something like that? That was, was. A, that was a, a healthy drought. And to be able to, to be the one – to be the one to uh, break that drought is a uh, – that's a big deal. I, I would say that's a big deal, Coach Scott, to be the one to break that drought. I would, give him, I would give him Cleveland. Now, I know you would give him Cleveland as well. What about Miami and, and Los Angeles? And Coach Jay, I'm going to come back to you because I want to talk to you about that Lakers uh, trophy uh, statue as well. Coach Scott, okay. Miami and uh, Los Angeles, do you think he's deserving of those as well? Uh, Miami, uh, definitely. I think Miami, uh, winning two championships, going to four finals, um, collecting two MVPs there, um, scoring over 8,000, scoring right at 8,000 points for those, you know, those, uh, mathematicians that, that want to hold me to the, to the, to the letter of the number <laughs> 7,919 to be specific, 1,900 assists and two, 2,225 physical rebounds, shooting over 55%, shooting 37% for three point. I absolutely believe that in doing so, he accomplished something that the greats, and I'm talking about the Shaqs, I'm talking about the Lonzos, I'm talking about even the D-Wades. He took them to four consecutive physical finals, and he won two, brought home two. I think that that is deserving of a statue. Um, definitely in Cleveland, a 52-year drought and being a homegrown. We 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 overlooked that. He was homegrown. He homegrown and brought a championship back to his city. Yes, I think he deserves one. But for That's L.A., true. no. no. Wait, before not, you move not, to not, L.A., not. before you move to L.A., let me ask you this about L.A., right? Uh, about Miami. You just named the four championships. All right. And we got you said no for L.A., right? No for L.A. No, you no don't for LA. Feel okay. No, no. Okay. So for Miami, and I want to get both of your feedback, and I'm going to call you Coach Scott then, back to Coach J.L. He played in four finals, four straight finals, correct? One, two. That was great for the city. For uh, It was great for the city of Miami. But in two of those finals, he had two of his most embarrassing finals losses. I think the two... Em- I think those are the only two embarrassing final losses he had, actually, because the first finals loss he had in Cleveland, it was he got swept, yes, but it was the Spurs. You know, he all right, you gotta give him a break. He got him to the finals, all right. I you know, I don't hold that against him that he got swept by the Spurs at that point. Power powerhouse team like that. But in Miami, when you got Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosch, and a whole slew of great all uh role players. And to get beat by a Dallas Mavericks team. Now, people say, well, Jason Kidd was on that team and Dirk Nowinski, but Kidd was two years removed from retirement, averaged like 
five points and four assists. Like he was not the Jason Kidd that we know to be. People are people would take the Hall of Fame career and uh, um, give it to Kidd at, in Dallas that last mm-hmm. year, and, and that's not what it was. Kidd was not that person at that time. Jason Terry also. I embarrassed kid, uh, LeBron James during that finals as well. That's why I say it's like that was one of his finals losses that was embarrassing. The other finals loss uh, to those Spurs, that was the 2015 Spurs, when they set all type of records on the Miami Heat. To have a Heat team so great as they had the team, but to lose twice like that, do you still, in taking that into consideration, still would say that they sh- he sh- should get a t- statue? Taking those two embarrassing losses in the finals – into consideration? Absolutely. Um, you know, we look prior to that, you got a Miami Heat team that was swept by the Chicago Bulls that probably, in my opinion, was equally, if not more stacked um, or stout than uh, than the big three. Um, so, yeah, when I when I look at, you know, everybody's everybody's afforded the faux pas. Right. I think that, mm-hmm. that Dallas Mavericks. <clears throat> Um, championship was 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 a faux pas. I, I don't I don't you know the 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 solar eclipse does happen. It does happen. Like it, it's not something that doesn't happen. But um, you know that Spurs team, no, they shouldn't have lost, but they did. And and you don't the way LeBron James played and and what he brought to the table in that loss. I mean, it, it's 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 very it's very reminiscent of when he lost to the Clabs and outplayed the whole Cavaliers team. Like he should have been the finals MVP, but he was on the losing side of the other of the of the spectrum. So it's it's okay. just a lot of things that I don't think that you lay at his feet. It's a lot of things you lay at three people's feet, but it, you don't just lay it at LeBron James' feet. That's why I say right. I take <clears throat> the totality of the situation um, into consideration, just based on the fact that Dwayne Wade is a Hall of Famer, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know he, he's got to take some skin in the game too. That was it's Wade County is what they call That's it. True. They didn't call it Dwayne County. That, that, hey, listen, I, I, that part's true. That's, that's Wade County. Dade County, Wade County. You know what I mean? Just remove the D and put a W. Coach J.O., uh, speaking of totality of the circumstances, they beat the Spurs the year before, and it was because Ray Allen hit a game-saving shot to send them into overtime. They go into overtime, they pull it out. I remember that series, watching that series. I thought it was over. They were willing the trophies and everything. Yep. Out. It was over. Yep. And then, you know, they go into overtime, and I remember – they interview the next year. They interviewed Tim Duncan. I will always remember. Yep. This. It was like, <laughs> if you guys get back to the finals, which they were projected to do, who would you like? Who would, what team would you like to see? And Tim Duncan, with all respectful, you know, tone. Yeah, we, we would love to see Miami again because we think we could have won it. You know, they're a great team. You know, we think we're a great team. The, the, the politically correct answer, right? They asked LeBron James, be careful what you wish for. I remember that. <laughs> Coach Scott, I know you remember that. And so I was like, okay, so when the finals came around, the Spurs showed up. They showed out. Including that Dallas Mavericks game uh, finals. With that, would you say uh, LeBron is still deserving of a statue in Miami? No, he's not deserving of a statue in Miami. I'm going to tell you why. Even Pat Riley knows this. Okay? Loyalty has to be rewarded. And we all know throughout LeBron James' career, loyalty is not something that he uh, that's at the top of his character list. It's just not, right? He's not a loyal man when it comes to the teams. He's not, okay? LeBron James is dedicated to LeBron James' interests. It's cool. It is what it is, right? I'm, <clears throat> I'm not tripping about that. That's just a fact, and that's proven, all right? June 19, 2014, after... The uh, Spurs wiped out the Miami Heat out the court by a record deficit margin. NBA record deficit margin. Pat Riley, quote, you have to stay together if you have the guts and don't find the first door and run out of it. Who you think he was talking mm-hmm. to, Coach Scott? Who do you think he was talking to? Do you not understand this? Who do you think he was talking to? He was talking to LeBron James. That's who he was talking to. Okay? You, you, you were asking a question. Did you want me to respond or you was going to answer for me? Uh, you know, I was asking. Hey, listen. That's who he was talking to. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and who ran? To answer for who me, ran right? from the grind? Who, like, think about this. This is not a Miami Heat team that was on the floor. This is a Miami Heat team that just was in the championship. Why run? Why run from the grind? Listen, he wasn't running from the grind. And here's, and here's, and here's the biggest thing that this is what I love about LeBron James. One, in his career, he's always taken control and not played the, 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 I'm, 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 I'll, I'll make it plain. He hadn't played the monkey on the string in Cleveland. He played through his contract. He was able to leave. He left in Miami. He played through his contract and he left. He left the way he was supposed to leave. He, he played through his contracts and it's a GM's job. It's a president's job. It's an owner's job to try to keep the best players in situations where they stay together the longest that's their job and yes if i was an educated person like i am i would leverage the conversation that way as well it, the easy thing to do is not run it, i would position it that way as well but we all know we know better we know better we've seen better and that's what he did he saw better and he went and got better and he and he did better because he won another championship you made well, the statement coach you made a statement, Coach, that he left the right way. We all know that LeBron James and Dwayne Wade <clears throat> are best friends. So if you are best friends, why did your best friend not know that you were signing with the Cleveland Cavaliers? Why did he have to hear that he from, from other best, places? He flew his best friend on a plane and told him. Okay. He flew his best friend on a plane, flew him out on a plane and told him. Again, again, He again. didn't do it like he, Kevin Durant did. He all didn't right, do like right. Kevin okay. Durant did Westbrook. <laughs> he didn't do him like that. Hello? I will say this. Hold on, hold on. I will, I will say this. Let me get in here. That's true. He didn't do him like Westbrook did him. Um, but he did. He did. Dwayne Wade did find out a little late. But I will say this though. I will agree with Coach Scott that LeBron James did leap. I. That's one thing I do really like about LeBron James because the NBA teams will, you know, they will squeeze all the juice they can out of you and throw you away when you're done. And he. He flipped the script and he started doing it to the NBA teams. I am not mad at LeBron for that one. Get your money, OG. Get your money. I'm with you on that. Now, what I didn't like was that whole decision. It was a horrible decision. The Miami thing, I think that's going to hunt him forever. But that stuff like that, you know, I think it was kind of, you know, off. But um, I got to agree, agree with Coach Scott. He played, through his, he played throughout his contract. Now, if you want to talk about teammates and should have told his team and all that, we could. That's another discussion. Business wise, I think he did what he had to do to make sure he's a successful uh, that, businessman. That's not true, though, Abaya. That's not true. Why not? Do we not know that LeBron James teams have the most trades in NBA history? Is that right or wrong? That's a true statement that I just made, and we know okay. that LeBron James, when these teams make trades. They're not necessarily making their trades to the best interest of their team. They're making these trades to the best interest of LeBron James. But that, that kind of proves the point, though, that business-wise, because what I'm saying is he set himself up. To, he set himself up to win. Whether we want to say he did it this way, this way, I don't like it, I do like it. He plays to his contract and say, hey, I'm going to go here. I get more money and I want players here. He set himself up. Whether he built super teams, and I do agree he built super teams, but regardless, as a businessman, he set himself up well. As a teammate, player, we can just, I think that's a separate discussion, but I do agree with Coach Scott. He played through his career, his contracts. He played through them and he was allowed to leave. That's what happens. When your contracts expire, you're done. I can go where I want to go. It's called a free agent because I'm an agent that's free to go <laughs> wherever I want to go. But you act, but y'all acting like there's not uh business uh isn't personal. That's what y'all acting like. Business is personal. It should don't be. do that. We know business is personal. People say don't take it personal. Business is personal. <laughs> it can't Come be, on now. It shouldn't be. Let's stop it. It sh it's, but it shouldn't be. Personal. You're it right, shouldn't Coach be. Dale. You know, well, the you church, wait, hold on, church, church and state, church and uh state should mix. It do sometimes. But, but business is personal. Business is always personal. All right. <laughs> but what would you have him to do? What would you have him to do if he plays through his contract? What would you? That's have a great him to question. Do? Not great be question. the max player getting paid. Not not to be the highest paid pair 
in the league when you're the best player in the league? Is, is that what you're having? Is that what no, you're saying? No, he was going to get his money regardless. Okay. He was going to get his money. Why not? You're on a championship team. Why not reboot, come back, and redeem yourself? You just lost. Redeem yourself. You just I lost. Mean, you're in the championship. Like, what other team are you going to go? Like, why? Like, what's the purpose? But What's but coach, the purpose of going to another coach, team? Coach, coach, that's more team, teammate, player we we're talking about. We were talking about the business. And I get it. You say business is, it is personal, which it shouldn't be personal. It can clash across being personal, but it shouldn't be. Business is business. Personal is personal. I'm getting my contracts. Let's move to the next segment. All right. Big Perk calls LeBron James out. Part of the reason he calls out LeBron James is because a lot of people believe LeBron James is actually jealous of Michael Jordan. Now, Coach Scott, two questions. I need you to hit both of them. LeBron James jealous of Michael Jordan. Why would he be jealous of Michael Jordan? And what are your thoughts on Big Perk calling LeBron James out for some foolish statements that he made about who was the most influential players in NBA history? What are your thoughts on the statements? No, Michael uh, LeBron James is not jealous of Michael Jordan. I think, if anything, it could be a little bit of the other way around. Now, as it pertains to what? Big Perk, yeah, I, I said it. I, I, I said it. Um, but as it pertains to Big Perk calling uh, LeBron James out, hey, Big Perk has the ability to, to call out anybody based on how he feels. But as LeBron James see the game, he sees the game. He sees the game based off of what he feels was the most influential player in his eyes. Just like Big Perk sees it as who it is in his eyes. Everybody's going to be subjective in their opinion. Everybody is. Everybody's going to be, everybody didn't like wearing the short pants. You have Mike come in, the pants get longer. But, yeah, that, but to them, coach. that was influential. But the way that Allen Iverson came in the game and changed the way that players played the game and kept it close net to who they were and who they physically are as a person, those coach. things Michael Jordan didn't do. Wait, 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 wait. When we start talking about influential, I think we can kind of leave the world of subjectivity and it could be objective here, right? Because we can just look at the 80s, what Magic, Bird, they grew the NBA. Did they not? Jordan took it global. He changed it. The people overseas now, a lot of people, should I say overseas, probably don't even hear about basketball in the NBA if it wasn't for Michael Jordan. So when we're talking about influential, we're talking about the influence what got the 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 league the players to where they are let's be honest i'm not arguing that point i would agree with you on that stance he was a player michael jordan was a player at that time that had the skill set and the backing by nike and the backing by the nba to be a global giant i agree but what LeBron James might have this is the only thing I'm, I, I would be thinking that he was speaking to as it pertains to the influence of the game as he saw it in the transitional modern era of basketball <clears throat> people weren't wearing braids people weren't doing the, 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 the things Allen Iverson was doing he brought the quote unquote what the league called it at the time a bad boy image but he was literally just a homegrown kid that just loved the game of basketball. Okay. Those are the things that were influential that I'm that I'm suspecting he's talking about because that mm. wasn't Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was very polished. He was very refined as a product. Michael Jordan okay. was just right. not a product. He was a brand. Well, all right, Coach J.O., now we just finished talking about the statement, if Jordan made it, if he didn't make it, if he did make it, it should have been clarified, right? That was not clarified in LeBron James' statement. He said the most right. influential – Players, right. when right. you say the most influential players, like we can objectively say that's false. <laughs> that's that's not true. It's just not true. And st- stats or uh, uh, viewership or anything, you know, we 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 can we can really say that's not true. And if he meant that, then that should have been clarified. But his statements, 
Do you take those statements to be true or false? If false, do you think they're false because he was saying that as a shot at Michael Jordan due to being jealous of Jordan? Or it was just something he really felt? It's utterly false. And LeBron James is doing LeBron James, controlling the narrative. Coach Scott just said, LeBron James has a right to have his opinion on who uh, or what he feels like or who he feels like influenced the game the most. Correct? Let's, let's hear LeBron James and his quotes about who influenced him the most. These are mm. direct quotes from LeBron James. I did everything MJ did. As a kid, I shot fadeaways when I shouldn't suppose when I shouldn't have. I wore a leg sleeve on my leg, folded it down so I can see the red part. I wore black and red shoes with white socks. I wore short shorts so you can see the uh my under my undershorts <laughs> underneath. When I was a kid, I looked up to Mike. I wear 23 because of Mike. I fell in love with the game because of Mike. Growing up, when seeing MJ, it was like seeing God. I had to pitch myself. The first time I saw him, the dude looked like Jesus Christ. Those are the words of LeBron James. We're talking about his opinions. That's what you said, coach. He has the right to it. So what do we say here? We call him Cap, as a, coach. As a That's kid. what we call him. You, 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 you're, you're saying what he said as a kid? No, 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 no. He wasn't a kid. He was not a kid. He was not a kid I, when he said I these things. Just, I thought you just said you was reading quotes from when he was a kid. No, 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 no. I, I wasn't right. reading quotes from when he was a kid. No, I wasn't. Okay. okay. Well, well, can can you be a little bit more clear on what you're reading? I thought I was crystal clear. I said I was reading quotes from directly LeBron. from LeBron James. Right. Not why he was a kid. You, LeBron James is about to be 40 years old, right? I, I don't. When, when when did he make this? Was this was the 2017 East after the Eastern Conference Finals of 2017. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hmm. Uh, oh, that's it. I th you you just said he has the right to his opinions. These are his opinions about he, who he, influenced him the does, most. And none does, of that said he Allen does Allen, have. Right, that said I, I'm going to leave again. He does have a right to it as an opinion. And as I stated prior to, because you are a Michael Jordan fan, and one of the things I stated in the last show, Michael Jordan fans just don't listen like you're not listening right now. I clearly just said what I think he interpreted as and when he made the statement, it was based upon things that influenced the game as he saw it today. That's exactly what I said. The things the that coach. he saw influence. That's why he would say an Allen Iverson and people of that nature. That's what but I'm talking about. Two two key words you stated though, Coach. Three key words. But I think you're not sure on that. You can't I'm, actually I'm say I'm that. Not. I'm not. But he. So, but but Coach Jo is not even referencing the fact that I said that because he wasn't but listening. I, I listed off almost <laughs> ten quotes of LeBron James about who influenced them the most. And we did not hear Allen Iverson or Steph Curry. That's the point. That we did not hear their point. names mentioned. That is a great point. That we did not hear Steph Curry. As a matter of fact, this is why I kind of call Cap on what LeBron James was saying. Because if anything, I think he's, he's like, oh, I love that guy. During the interview, I love Steph Curry. And I think that was a, I'm going to say that out loud, so, out loud so Steph can hear it. Maybe we can link up soon. That's just my personal thought. That's just me trying to read uh, beneath, you know, between the lines, let's just be. Because if you do love that guy, it's very recent because you guys did not like each other initially. All right. Let's just be honest. And you, if you love Steph Curry, it, this is like just happened last week sometime. So, Jake, Coach AO makes a great point. We didn't hear, we never heard Allen Iverson's name as influential or who influenced him or Steph Curry. And we know that you and Steph Curry didn't even get along half the time. So, all of a sudden, to say, Michael, uh, Allen Iverson or uh, uh, Steph Curry was more influential than Michael Jordan, who he did make all those comments about, who he did uh, look up to so heavily, who is the reason why he does wear the number 23. I got to say, Coach, Coach Scott, this sounds like cap. Let's be real. That's just that's that's, that's bogus. I think I think I think saying Anthony Edwards, it, it, he has he has reminiscence. It, it makes him feel all nostalgic. Like, like it's, it's him. I think that that's cap. But you see what you did? You had to add that in there. <laughs> that was never said. 
These we are talking about things Michael that are Jordan, actually said. Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan didn't say Anthony Edwards reminds him of him. He didn't say that. No, but what you just said, he did not say. <laughs> what you the way did, you just tried to not, paint the picture, you did didn't he say not that. No, say Anthony Edwards no. reminds him of him. That's but that wasn't that you didn't you no that's not how you said it. The way you tried to paint I, I that think, picture. I think that that's cap. <laughs> I think uh, that that's cap. <laughs> I think that hey, that's cap. It could be. I mean, it could be. We can't say it's not. Let's let's just keep it one hundred. I, I think they. I think they got a background competitive. Hey, I want to be known as the great, and I want to be known as the forever great. Competition going on in the background. That that's just my opinion. I don't think it's a question that who is going to be the all, goes down as all time greatest. I don't think it's a question. Like like Coach Jo, I don't. It's not even close, right? And I I do I do agree with you, Coach Scott. There is some competitiveness there because. Coach uh, J.O., do you remember that fast break when he was playing against the Charlotte? When he was playing against Charlotte, he was looking at Michael Jordan the entire way he oh, makes yeah, that dunk yeah, while staring yeah, at Michael Jordan. Yeah. Me, I found it yeah. very disrespectful, yeah, but dropped, I guess that's that competitive 61. nature. He dropped 61. Huh? He dropped 61 that night. Yeah, but yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I all, for, all for not, you know, nothing happened. But yeah, but so the point is, you know, I don't think it's going to change at this point. And I think LeBron James knows that. That's why I think right now it's just a stat chasing machine at this point, because let me see if I can solidify myself as a GOAT by building stats because the championship, I might not catch that six rings. It's a good chance that I'm not going to catch it. But I, Coach Scott, you might be right. MJ probably said that if he said it, it could be cap. And but we can definitely say what LeBron James was said, what he said definitely was cap. But we have reached the end of our show. Listen. We are on all social media. We're on Facebook. We're on uh, YouTube. We're on uh, uh, what? What's other social? Media? Instagram, Spotify. Twitter, Instagram. Spotify. We everywhere. Make sure you guys follow us. Like, just like the. Uh, make sure you hit the like button. You know, what I mean, hit the subscribe button. Just a little bell down there. Click it and make sure the little what are the little ringy things next to the bell. Make sure those things are on because that that when you do that, that means you get all notifications. We are here and we drop videos three to four times per week and we also go live every tuesday night at 8 30 call in the number scrolls across the bottom of the screen call in give us your uh, understanding or your take on who you think is the goat and participate let's have fun we'll see you guys next time welcome to the goat debate the premier online sports debate show where engaging discussions and thrilling debates unfold as we determine who is the greatest of all time in every sport i am your host abaya israel joined by my two co-hosts coach scott and coach jo tune into our youtube and facebook channels to catch our reactions and coverage of the biggest games and the latest news don't miss out on your chance to participate in the action join us every tuesday night at 8 30 p.m eastern standard time for the goat debate where you the viewer can call in and share your thoughts on who deserves the title of the goat be sure to mark your calendars every monday we upload 12 noon eastern standard time and we go live every tuesday night at 8 30 p.m eastern standard time be sure to subscribe call in and participate come and be a part of the conversation